Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome to another episode of TMI365. Today's episode, we're talking automation leveraging Power Automate and the Huntress API. If you're a Huntress partner today, it's likely you're already using the out of the box integrations with PSA tools that they have. But I wanted to create this video because there's a lot more that you can do with their API. And a few examples of that is if you wanted to chain additional automation on top of an incident that's being created within Huntress, you could also look at aggregating data like I am in a data warehouse where you have information coming from Intune, you have information coming from other third parties as well too that you want to correlate to get really rich device objects. Another reason is that you have a third party tool for invoicing purposes potentially that you want to integrate with that you don't have out of the box like QuickBooks Online for instance. So in this video I'm going to show you how to set up a custom connector for Huntress and then we'll walk through actually tapping in to create an API call. As always, if this content is helpful, please go ahead and like and subscribe to the channel. Let's go ahead and dive in. So before we actually get into creating the custom connector, I just want to reiterate some of the examples that I'm using internally here with their API and Power Automate. I'm pulling in all this information into a central data warehouse and I can see rich information about device objects within my organization. And in particular for this particular customer, it's just an example customer, I can see that only seven out of my 13 devices that I have under management have a Huntress agent. So that's an action item for me. I can also see correlated subscription data and this is correlating from across different vendors all in a single location so I understand how many agents are reporting back at a single point in time. All the device information is coming in and I can see that again correlated here. This is pulling in information across Intune that the devices are enrolled in. You can also see information across my RMM tools, like in this case I have Synchro or other third parties like Red Canary for instance is another vendor that's adopted. And these are all things that we can correlate together to get really rich reporting within our own ecosystem. As far as prerequisites go, you will need to set up API credentials within Huntress. So you can come within Huntress and under the three little lines on here on the right hand side, you can come down into API credentials, which will take you to this page where you can generate some. Just note that you have multiple people potentially coming in here. So whenever it says regenerate, you know, you've already created one. So you don't want people to necessarily generate new ones after you've created yours most likely want to put that in a shared place, probably in IT Glue or some other documentation tool. But these are the credentials we'll need when setting up the custom connector. The only other prerequisite here is in Power Automate, you do need a premium level subscription for Power Platform. I'll reference it here within this particular image that I'm showing up on the screen right now. These are my recommended licenses that I would probably want to have within the environment. And again, you may have the competencies that are giving you these licenses today for your silver or gold partner with Microsoft. So pivoting into the actual creation here, we can go into the Power Automate platform as an admin and I can go under data and I can click on custom connectors. We're going to create a new custom connector here and we're gonna create it from blank. You can see I already created this Huntress one here in this particular example, but that's just because I walked all the way through it. For the purposes of this demo though, we're gonna create one new. You can name it Huntress or Huntress API, whatever you want here. You can go ahead and upload the logo. And then for a lot of this information, we're just going to use the API documentation from Huntress. So let's go ahead and pivot there. I'll provide a link to this documentation below, but this is everything that you'll need here to make the endpoints within Power Automate. And so we have all of our endpoints here on the left-hand side. I'm going to go ahead and grab this URL here because this is what we're going to need for the initial uh, configuration steps for our custom connector. So let's pivot back to Power Automate. We'll paste in the host, which is the api.huntress.io, and then the base URL, which is the v1. And then we'll head over to security. We'll change this to basic authentication. This is going to be your API key and API secret that you got from the portal. We won't actually place those values in just yet. As it says, we don't place secrets here. We're doing that when we actually set up the configuration. Next, we'll go into the definition here. The definition is all the endpoints that you want to create. So I can add a new action and I can give it a particular endpoint that I want to list. And then that's what requests we'll put in here. So it's really up to you as far as what endpoints that you want to interact with. And you can read through the documentation. 
The account one for me wasn't something that I necessarily needed because I'm using this as a partner account. And so I just went straight into creating organizations, agents, incident reports, summary reports, and billing reports. So depending on your need and where you want to facilitate, you'll want to create these endpoints. But I can go ahead and just grab the request here. And for this, I can just call this organizations. Then in description again, this is whatever you want to show here. This is what will show up in the Power Automate flow as well too if you hover over certain actions. So it's kind of good just for the rest of your team to have that as well too. And then you can label it as well here too with a operation ID. Then we'll go ahead and we'll use a get request for this and we'll paste in the actual import. And part of these you'll see in the API documentation, you have these parameters as well that you could put in. And this is up to you if you want to use these. It helps with filtering out these requests. I recommend creating these as well too, just to help you when you talk about going through and actually submitting requests. You want to filter that as much as you can to get the least amount of information possible in the sense of what you actually need. At the very baseline though, you're always gonna to wanna to include the page if you have many organizations or whatnot, just because you're gonna to have to use the native pagination within the Huntress API to go ahead and loop through various pages. So I always like to put that here as far as the uh, parameter, and then you can go ahead and click on import, and then that'll have a query parameter that, that is inserted here as well too. You don't have to define this right out of the gate, and that's what's gonna be dynamic whenever we're creating our Power Automate flows. So that's the basics of basically creating this. You can also create the default responses if you wanted to as well. I personally like to just go ahead and do that within the Power Automate flow where I parse out the JSON and you'll see that more here when we actually walk through that. But your next steps here is really just to create all the actions that you want here as far as all of the endpoints. So I'll be right back after I've created all these. Okay, I'm back and I've created all the endpoints that I want with the parameters that I want as well too. When I'm done with that, I'm gonna go ahead and click on create connector. Then once that's done and it's saved here, I get a success message and then I'm gonna go ahead and go skip over to the test section. I'm gonna click on create new connection, which will open up a new page for me here where I can submit the API key and API secret. So you go ahead and paste those values in there now from what you got from the Huntress portal. Then once you create that connection, you'll be redirected back to this page. You just simply have to click on the refresh connection button and you'll have your connection that'll show up. And then you can go ahead and test the operation here. I'll just put in page one, click on test operation. And that goes ahead and gives me my response with status 200 and then all my organizations. If you get a status of 404 or 400 or something like that here, then it's likely you copied the API key or secret wrong. You should go back and make sure that's okay and create a new connection off of that. Once you're done, you can click on update connector to finish this up and that's it. So from here, let's go ahead and go into the flows and I'm gonna create a new flow. It's going to be instant cloud flow. And then we're just going to call this Huntress test. Obviously in this case, I'm just using this as an example to show you how to make a call you're obviously going to be using it in much more dynamic fashion when you're thinking about triggers you want to have happen and the flows through the Huntress API that you want to have. But in this particular case, I'm going to go ahead and go to custom and I have my Huntress API here that I just created. I'll have to clean this up afterwards just because I already had that one in there, but I can go ahead and add this in here. And now I have all of my actions, which I created as my endpoints. So if I wanted to go through and just say, like I wanted to grab the agents, I can specify the page here, and then I can click on new step. And this is where we use our parse JSON data operation to grab the body of the content that's coming here. And then from the schema, we're gonna generate it from a sample from the actual API documentation as well too. In the API documentation, you'll wanna to go to the endpoint that you're trying to leverage here and you'll want to copy the actual response here. And this one we've got actually just a little bit of a hiccup just because this is basically combining an object together for us. So we'll clean that up here. We'll click on generate from sample. We'll paste this in here. And then from here, we'll just go ahead and remove this dot, dot, dot from the JSON and then click done. And then this will generate our schema 
from that particular output as well too. So that's very good that we have that. What I always like to do is go ahead and save this at this point in time. And then we'll run this just to see that the schema is passing the test from the agents that we're getting. So that ran successfully here and I can go ahead into the parse JSON and I can see that the agents is coming out correctly and we have all of the information here pulling back as well too. So all that looks good. I can go back and edit this and then if I click on new step, I will just select something like compose for instance. So this is just a data operation but I just want to show now that we've parsed out this information, we have all of the metadata here as dynamic content. And so this is what you can use to populate other fields for whatever you're trying to do within Power Automate Flow. So now that you have that, that is everything you need to start creating your own custom workflows with the Huntress API. That's everything I want to showcase for you guys in today's video. I hope you found that useful and I hope you start leveraging that integration today to start to create some pretty cool workflows within your organization. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, like or subscribe if you guys want to see more content around Microsoft and the MSP space. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.